will come to the fifth pediatric physical examination session. In my today's lesson, I'm going to discuss about gastrointestinal system examination in uh, pediatrics. Uh, before starting uh, pediatric uh, gastrointestinal system physical examination, we should have to wash our hands and also we should have to use uh, po personal protective equipment as needed and uh, we should have to introduce our service to the patient and his attendant and also confirm the patient's name and the date of birth and we should have to explain what the examination will involve using patient's friendly language and also we should have to gain consent uh, to proceed uh, with the examination. And to start examining the abdomen, uh, we should have to adjust the head of the bed to 45 degree angle and ask the patient to lie on the bed. And also we should have to adequately expose the patient's abdomen uh, for uh, examination. And also exposure of the patient's lower leg is also helpful. And ask the patient if they have any pain before proceeding with a clinical uh, examination. Uh, in, in examining the abdomen or gastrointestinal system, we start this with inspection, then auscultation, then palpation and deprecation. Uh, to start with inspection of the gastrointestinal system, uh, we should have to see the shape of the abdomen by uh, standing in front of the patient, uh, whether it is flat, scaphoid, distended or uh, a symmetry of the abdomen. And uh, we should have to check for the scars and the pulsations. And also we should have to check for umbilicus, whether there is any discharge, any swelling or granuloma any hernia, uh, any omphalocele, or uh, other things at the abdomen, and also look at the shape of the umbilicus, whether it is inverted or inverted. And the movement of the abdomen should be seen, and normally the abdomen should have to move with respiration. And if the abdomen is not moving, we might consider peritonides. And also paradoxical movement of the abdomen might be caused by different things such as blue bar polio. And the seesaw movement of the abdomen can occur in uh, unilateral diaphragmatic paralysis. Uh, the other is if there is a, a visible peristalsis, uh, it, this, is, this is might be normal in malnourished children. Otherwise, visible peristalsis is caused by pathological causes such as intestinal obstruction or other problems like infantile hypertrophic pyloric stenosis. And also, we should have to check for uh, abdominal vein and uh, prominent veins may not be seen on abdominal wall and they determine the flow of the blood as shown uh, in the different direction uh, flow of blood is away from the umbilicus in inferior vena cava obstruction but blood flows from the above downward in uh, constrictive pericarditis and also caputa uh, medusa as you see on the picture there is several veins uh, which radiate from the umbilicus which is due to portal vein obstruction so we should have to check whether there is prominent abdominal vein and if there is prominent abdominal vein, we should have to check the direction of the flow of the, bed, the blade. If the blade flows from uh, away from the umbilicus, it is due to inferior vena cava obstruction. But if the blade flows towards the umbilicus, it is due to uh, constrictive pericarditis. Uh, when we uh, uh, inspect the abdomen, uh, we should have to stand in front of the patient to see it and also we, can, we should have to start on the right side of the patient and to come to the palpation uh, palpation of the abdomen could be difficult in a crying baby whose abdomen could be rigid and in such cases uh, try to palpate during inspiration when the abdomen uh, relaxes for that instance in general uh, examine in an orderly manner start from the uh, right lower quadrant followed by uh, right upper left upper uh, left lower quadrant and finally the mid abdomen and start, ab start abdominal examination by a superficial palpation or light palpation for uh, far away from the site of tenderness elicited by asking the patient where he or she feels pain when touched feel for softness of the abdomen and also uh, check, check for firmness or rigidity of the abdominal wall uh, which might be due to involuntary muscular spasm of the abdominal wall which might occur as a result of peritoneal retiration and there could be an abdominal rebound tenderness and it is elicited when the pressure on the abdominal wall is suddenly released causing the viscous to move in inflamed uh, peritoneal causing pain and appendicitis is a common abdominal uh, surgical emergency in children and in such cases uh, palpation of uh, the abdomen at McBurney point might cause point tenderness and the point is on the third of the line from the umbilicus to the right anterior superior leg spine 
when a mass is palpated in the abdomen describe describe the size the size the shape the surface the tenderness and also consistency whether it is hard or soft and also age of the mass should be checked for regularity whether it is sharp or blunt and the pulsation and also mobility of the mass should be uh, checked uh, if a localized mass is noted on the abdomen in order to differentiate whether the mass arises from tissue above the abdominal wall uh, ask the patient to rise up with the hip and the legs fix it in the extension position uh, if the mass is intra-abdominal it will disappear uh, when, the, when there is ascites it might be difficult to palpate larger organs in such case balloting the organ should be uh, tried the pulp of the uh, hand is placed in the expected uh, site of the enlargement and the hand is flexed as the carpal metacarpal joint slightly pressing downward and the, when the pressure is quickly removed a tap is felt on the pulp so this is how we check for balloting uh, check for uh, hernia at potential areas or hernial orifice which includes epigastric area and balacal area and also the inguinal areas uh, epigastric hernia is situated between the umbilicus and the zifsternal centrally and ask the patient to cough or watch carefully as the child cries. Uh, the bulging mass is soft and it can be pushed back into the abdomen and the edge of the opening can be felt by a careful um, examination. Umbilical hernia is a common hernia in children and the mass appears or increases in size as abdominal pressure is increased. The edge of the opening can be felt easily once the hernia is pushed back into the abdominal cavity and uh, examine individual organs. Inguinal hernia lies medial and above the pubic tubercle and the mass can be pushed back into the abdominal cavity and ask the patient to cough while the fingers are palpating uh, the mass to detect the cough impulse. And femoral hernia is felt at the lump lateral to end above the pubic tubercle and the medial to the femoral pulse. And also we should have to uh, yeah, so we should have to do light palpation, deep palpation, and also specific palpations of intra-abdominal organs. Specific palpation for liver, specific palpation for spleen. And in a crying child, palpate when the child pauses to take another breeze or to take a next breeze. Uh, deep palpation is uh, used to feel internal organs and the masses and use the front of fingers to firmly press down into the area of the body about 4 to 5 centimeters. Then lift your fingers off the body and move to the next area uh, nearby. It helps to identify the size, the shape, tenderness, symmetry and motility of uh, the mass. And deep palpation can be painful and uncomfortable for patients uh, while examining the abdomen. And another way to palpate is to put one hand on the top of another when pressing down. It is called uh, bimanual technique. Uh, this is how we uh, examine for liver, specific palpation for liver. Uh, to check for li uh, liver uh, liver size, first start palpation in the right iliac fossa, then press your right hand into the abdomen as you ask the patient to take a deep breath. If she is uh, young children, you use uh, when she cries for uh, when she pauses for the next crying, you can use one step ahead and feel for a step and as the liver edge passes below your hand. If you don't feel anything, repeat the process with your hand one to two centimeters higher. If you feel uh, the river edge, uh, note to de de describe the degree of extension below the costal margin, constancy of the liver edge, whether it's smooth or irregular, tenderness, uh, tender uh, liver edge suggests hepatitis or it might be due to CHF, and the pulsatile uh, liver might be uh, caused by tricuspid regurgitation or any other cardiac problems. And also we should have to measure uh, the liver size. Uh, below costal margin and also total vertical liver span. Uh, we should have to mention the, this, the, the length of the liver below uh, right costal margin uh, on the midclavicular line and also we should have to measure uh, the total liver span by parking uh, from above downward, from the lung downward. And when we reach the dullness of the liver, we uh, mark it and also we parkes from uh, down upward on the midclavicular line. And when we uh, reach the edge of the uh, liver, uh, we make it a mark and also we measure the centimeter distance between each point. Yeah. The other is Hackett's grading system for palpating uh, spleen. Spleen uh, enlargement is graded based on the Hackett's grading system. It's called grade 0 uh, if it is normal or impalpable. And it's, it is called grade 1 uh, if spleen is palpable only on deep inspiration. And we call it grade 2 if spleen is palpable on midclavicular line halfway between umbilicus and the costal margin. 
and we call it grade 3 as spleen expands towards the umbilicus and grade 4 is the spleen goes past the umbilicus and the uh, grade 5 is the spleen expands towards the symphysis pubis and also in another in another way we can measure uh, the size of the liver through costal margin on the direction of growth so we can say liver is uh, 3 cm uh, on the uh, on the line of growth or we can say grade 3 uh, splenomegaly or grade 4 splenomegaly for example you can say grade 3 splenomegaly when the spleen expands toward the umbilicus level if the spleen reaches to the umbilicus we call it grade 3 if it reaches uh, if it passes the umbilicus we say grade 4 if it is uh, found at symphysis pubis we call it grade 5 so we should have to grade the splenomegaly uh, when we see the percussion component of the abdominal examination uh, normally the abdomen is tympanic to percussion and the dullness occurs in a fluid accumulation or in the presence of solid mass uh, if a fluid is suspected in the peritoneum it is detected by eliciting uh, shifting dullness and shifting dullness is uh, percussion is done with, when the patient is in the supine position uh, from the umbilicus towards the flank area till dullness is elicited then the patient is standard to lie down on the opposite flank side and as the site of the dullness percussion is repeated, uh, it results in tympani. And the fluid release, when the child is in the supine position, the edge of the hand of an assistant is placed longitudinally along the umbilicus. Uh, one hand of the examiner is placed around the flank, and the opposed flank is tapped by the other's hand. And the thrill is felt on the palm of the other hand if there is a significant amount of free fluid. And if the fluid is small in the amount, the patient can be put in the nichest position and the percussion is done uh, from the fluid uh, from the flank towards the umbilicus. And the dullness is elicited in the umbilical area uh, if there is a fluid. Now, this is called paddle sign. And so, first of all, we should have to do paddle sign. If there is no fluid on the paddle sign, uh, no need of doing shifting dullness and the fluid trail. Because paddle sign detects a small amount of fluid, around 120 ml of fluid in the uh, intraabdominal cavity can be detected by a paddle sign, whereas shifting dullness detects only uh, when the fluid reaches around 500 ml, whereas fluid detrill uh, detects uh, fluid if it is massive. So first, paddle sign appears, then shifting dullness appears, then uh, uh, fluid detrill uh, appears as a massive ascites appears. So uh, on examination, for example, if shifting dullness is negative, if there is no fluid on the shifting dullness, uh, no need of doing fluid drill because fluid drill detects huge ascites than that of shifting dullness. Shifting dullness appears before fluid drill as if fluid accumulates in the intra-abdominal cavity. Uh, when we come to the auscultation part of the abdomen, it is advisable to auscultate the abdomen before uh, palpation and the bowel sound should be auscultated carefully and absent bowel sound may suggest paralytic illness and increased bowel sound may be due to uh, intestinal obstruction in a severely mashed children with a scaphoid abdomen the pulsation of the abdominal aorta could be heard on auscultation of the abdomen uh, centrally and the listen for renal brutes above the umbilicus about two centimeters from the midline on either side and renal brutes is suggestive of uh, renal artery stenosis so uh, normally the auscultation should be done after an inspection because if we do uh, palpation before uh, auscultation on the abdomen it might disturb the bowel sound so uh, in, after inspection we do auscultation auscultation is done to uh, ex examine bowel sound and we say bowel sound is absent if there is no bowel sound for five minutes and we say bowel sound is hypoactive if it is less than five per minute and we say active bowel sound if it is uh, from 5 to 30 or active means normal active so we say normal active bowel sound if bowel sound is uh, from 5 to 30 per minute and we say hyperactive bowel sound if it is greater than 30 and uh, the other component of auscultation is uh, for vascular sound is aortic uh, renal and the common iliac and aortic is then at midline between the umbilicus and the xiphoid and the renal uh, artery Auscultation is done at 2 inches superior to and 2 inches lateral to the umbilicus, whereas common lack is done, as you see on the image, midway between the umbilicus and the midpoint of the inguinal ligament. So, overall, uh, in inspection, then auscultation, then palpation, and the percussion of uh, gastrointestinal system is done like this. 
thank you for listening and uh, please subscribe this channel to get uh, the videos that I will do daily uh, first. Thank you.